Hello, what's up? Hey, how's it going? I'm gonna sound a little bit strange. I'm in a different location right now. Okay. How do I sound? Uh, you sound good. Okay, that's good. That's good. How have you been? Uh, I, um, I've been fine. How have you been? Uh, pretty good. I took a week off from Hell YouTube. Yeah. And, nice. Um, and actually over the course of the week, I, I uploaded a series that, um, it was me, Arch, Kibbs, Lilith, and Taftaj. Taftaj nice. bowed out like three quarters of the way through because she couldn't do it anymore. But we watched um, Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power season one and like riffed on nice. it. Because it's not a very good show. Oh, really? But I released that. Yeah, it's pretty bad. But I, I released it over the course of um, my week off. It was a pretty good week off. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. That's cool. Well, someone says I'm more muffled than normal. Yeah, so I mean, this is. Hold on, I gotta adjust. Hold on. Jeez. Hold on. I'm in a different location. All my stuff's strange. But, uh, yeah, so what's the, uh, what's the TLDR and what you're doing right now? Just, just for, I've only, I've only seen, like, a little bit of the stream. What's, what's going on here? I'm reviewing my torture from the past two days, essentially. Uh, the first piece of torture was the panel that turned into a 3v1, um, and nobody else could get in. <laughs> and the second torture is the two hours, uh, of hate that actually ended up being more like two hours of mild criticism. Oh my gosh, thank you for the $10, L. Oh, is that L from Death Note, even? It kind of looks like the, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's him, L from Death Note. Jesus. Cool. Um, so, I, I guess the, my, my first question is, why, why are you doing this to yourself? <laughs> Self-torturing self again. You seem to do this regularly. Um, I think it's good for me to review things, like that, um, that, that, uh, panel where it turned into everybody versus me i thought mm -hmm. i did worse on than i actually did when i actually reviewed it i was like oh this wasn't bad at all <laughs> um and uh and it made me feel a little bit better as well and then you know it's just good to go over things and kind of see where you could put other things how you can improve stuff like that so oh fair enough fair enough it just also sounds like you're you're torturing yourself, which probably isn't that good. <laughs> but I mean, Sorry, hey, if you're alt right punching bag art, yeah, uh, yeah. Apparently, I'm an alt right punching bag. Apparently, um, so oh, that's geez. another thing. Yeah, I don't think I am, but someone in your yeah. chat says, "Has Brove responded to Sunday yet?" Do you mean me? I and guess should means I? You, yeah. I don't think no. you need to. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you should just clown on him. What I would do is just clown on him. He's my favorite little cow right now. <laughs> he seems to be kind of insane. Just a little um, bit. Yeah, and he, he he seems like, oh man, I, I don't I don't necessarily know how similar they are, but he seems to have like a similar obsessive pattern, like Mister Girl does, where he'll oh. be like hyper fixated for a little bit and then move on. You know. You know, he used to be a huge Sargon fan. Apparently, <laughs> that's actually really funny. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is, I, I don't know about this, uh, this current video that you're about to watch, but the previous one was all about the platforming drama, right? Mm-hmm. So what, what's the TLDR on, on the Stardust platforming drama? Um, that I should care about the harm that I put out more than I should care about whatever benefits I think I'm getting from, um, my interaction. Um, at least that's what other people think. I personally, um, like what you said about different frameworks that we're operating in, um, really resonated with me. La last time we talked, I think, I don't know how long ago it was when we, when you said that to me, but that really resonated with me. And also I think, um, I can't lie and say that I, you know, like I know Chad Logic can, can do this. He can just giga Chad, be like, I don't give a fuck and like, it'll be fine. Right. Yeah. I can't really, I can't really lie about like about it i think it would be dishonest for me to say i don't care about harm that i can inflict at all um mm -hmm. clearly I, I care about some type of harm but as it is right now the any type of harm that i could that that is possible for me platforming people is um is outweighed by how much i love what i'm doing and and what benefits i think i'm getting from it 
Um, and it, it just outweighs it every time for me. Um, I, there may be some harm there, but the harm is just not enough for me to not do what I'm doing. So just to be clear, um, what you're talking about is when you'll talk to like Richard Spencer or somebody else who's on like yeah. the dissident right or something. Yeah. And you're platforming them and they're saying these people that, that, uh, mind waves and whoever else it was in that previous, um, in that previous video, they're telling you that you're talking to Richard Spencer or whoever you're exposing, you're, you're allowing them to expose their ideas to your audience. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to cause more harm than good down the road. Mm -hmm. Um, even if we were to accept that as true, like what, what, what is, what is actually your take on that? Like the idea that, oh, you talking to Richard Spencer and let's say that you do exceptionally poorly in a debate with him or something. And so what ends up happening is your audience is converted into, into neo-Nazis, right? Yeah, or some people that, that, in my audience are, yeah. Yeah, like that's, that's their view, right? And wh what's your counter-argument to that? Uh, my counter-argument is that I get better, right? And I just do better next time. Um... <laughs> My counter argument is yeah, that enough, if right? they were, yeah, and if they were that easily converted, then they weren't really mine to begin with. Yeah, yeah. See, I, do, I, I genuinely don't agree with the platforming arguments, and I'm, I'm a lot more like Chud Logic on this, where it's like, I don't care. I'm here to, I'm here to have fun. I'm here to do whatever I want. I'm here to make some money in some senses, mm -hmm. you know. So it's like, like I, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Um, at the same time, like I, don't, I don't even think Chud Logic would say that. I'm here to make money by causing harm to other people in, by his own standard of, of whatever harm happens to be. I don't even think Chud would say that, you know? I think mm -hmm. people genuinely don't think that they're, that even if they are causing harm, they, they don't think they are, generally, you know? Like, yeah. if, you're, if you were to talk to some, like, oil baron who's destroying, uh, you know, just destroying a forest or destroying something to get oil and then sell it, He's going to say that, well, there's benefits to getting the oil and selling it, too. And there are, there are benefits to getting the oil and selling it. He's just going to have a different moral calculus, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you can go back and forth on whether or not like, he's correct. or actually, no, actually, at some point, you can't because like, like, morality is one of, those tough, one of those really tough things to talk about because at the end of the day, everybody seems to be correct from their own point of view, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, so Sargon and I have had a bunch of morality arguments over the past couple of years in private, in private. And um, mm. a lot of it was like just, just reading up on like certain philosophy and certain, certain ideas and what morality is and how it should be structured. And it's just that you, you, you realize that like you, you drill down to a point where you, where it, you, you understand that everything is just, it's, it's all just how you feel about it. Mm -hmm. And there's no real moral calculus at all, which mm -hmm. is kind of like a black pill, but it seems to be true. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, if it's <laughs> true that these things have a risk, so does everything else. Like, everything yes. else has a risk. And mm -hmm. it, at the end of the day, is, is that risk worth it for you? And I'm going to answer, like, with what I'm doing, yes. You know, I, and it's worth it because... Not just because of the benefits I get from it, but because I genuinely enjoy. And there are very few, you know, I love making content, but there is very little content that I enjoy as much as like sitting down with people who I'm not supposed to sit down with, you know, and having a conversation. <laughs> to be fair, I'm, I'm the same way. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, that's, yeah. It's very, so many... there's so, I love it so much. And it's like people are asking me to, um, to care so much about this um, potential for harm that I stop doing something that I like deeply love or that I, I start doing it less, you know? And I, I don't think that's fair, so. No, I know, I know exactly what you mean. Um, yeah. Someone in the chat said, duh, what is this high school take? So here, here's, it's, it's not quite a high school take. It's like, um, you know, when you're young, most young people, we're talking like under 10 years old, like really young, they tend to operate under like some kind of deontological frame, right? If they're religious, if they're raised by a religious family or, just, you know, you know rules-based ethics, you follow what, the, what your teacher says, follow what your parents say, whatever, right? 
And then, like, generally, as you start thinking about these systems a bit more as you hit, like, your teen years and your 20s, that's when you start getting, like, consequentialists, right? And, I, 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 God, I'm reminded of, like, Xander Hall talking to Lauren Southern. Did you watch that? It was, like, a year mm -hmm. ago or six months ago, whatever it was? Yeah, yeah. And Xander Hall tried to hit her with, like, are you a consequentialist? Like, just asking that question openly several times. And Xander Hall doesn't seem to understand. Not to just throw shade on him, he's, he's not here, but I also don't care. But, like, he seems to be at that, like, early 20s. I think he's in his early 20s. So he's at that early 20s stage where it seems like ruthlessly going after ends in defiance of um, rules-based morality or in defiance of tradition or in defiance of whatever seems to be the best thing to do because what you want is to improve the world. So, you know, fair enough. But he, he just doesn't understand that, like, and what a lot of people... I've noticed on the left, what they don't understand is um, basically that in order for any sort of, of consequentialist or any sort of utilitarian ethics to work, you already have to have defined what the good is first in order to like be able to point out a good end, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, I think I might have, I don't know if I made this this comparison with you or with somebody else, but I was saying like you, you could have a a consequentialist ISIS fighter who believes that it's a good end to throw a gay person off of a rooftop. Mm -hmm. And to him, that's a good end. And so mm -hmm. he, he can actually give you a list of good ends that comes out of having one less gay person in the world. And then it's just like, well, how did he get, using the same framework, a completely different end than you or I would get to? Mm -hmm. And it's because, mm -hmm. well, any sort of moral calculus is based on a foundation of what what is basically just your moral intuitions, just your feelings, right? Mm -hmm. So like, we, you and I will say, well, we shouldn't kill gay people, and that guy might say, well, we should kill gay people, and then the only real difference between us is that we feel one way, and he feels a different way. And yeah, at, at that point, it's it's hard to reconcile different morality. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's there. There's like a you're just not going to. Uh communicate with the other person i guess yeah so yeah did i think the last time we talked um you were playing i think dark tide and i was trying to cheer you up about something or other and i basically said that a lot of people who are like like extremely progressive mm -hmm. or they are um or they're like socialist or something you know some kind of revolutionary socialist they tend to um they tend to view like every single action through through a moral framework that's like well how can i advance my yeah. my, my, my my political cause and yeah. so if you're not advancing a political cause when you're doing like taking any sort of step anywhere especially in public then you're um you're doing something bad right so yeah how can i make the world more left is i remember what you said specifically mm -hmm. about it yeah yes but here's the thing if you don't value making the world more left or at least you don't value it as much as they do well, then you're operating from a different moral framework, right? Yeah, and I don't value it as much as they do. I don't value, uh, I, I value this um, meaningful conversation with somebody more than I value um, worrying about some, you know, harm that I'm inflicting, um, you know, into the world through it. Um, I don't know, and yeah. I don't know if that makes sense, but no, it, it does. It does, and and that's probably what I would I would tell people like mind waves is just like listen, you have a moral framework such that you view things this way, but I don't share that framework, and to me, the greater good is having these conversations compared to the possibility, the admittedly very small possibility, that somebody on, you know, considering your audience, considering you, considering the relative size of your stream that you're going to like cause the third reich is is next to zero percent so like it's not much of a big deal you know there's there's no actual harm being done here and that's the case with almost all platforming arguments you know until you get to like destiny or bigger or like like, like a million subs on youtube like, like a sargon or something until you get to like these these really big names and larger the platforming argument like makes no fucking sense. Like, how, you know, how much Nazism are you actually spreading on like a twenty a twenty view Twitch panel stream? Like, fucking none. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. Um. Yeah. There's also one other thing I've been thinking about 
I was thinking of, it, it kind of came into mind as I was watching you talk about this. Um, the, the third main moral framework is, is virtue ethics. I, and you're familiar with virtue ethics, right? Not really a whole lot. I'm not really familiar with ethics as a whole. So. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So, I mean, the TLDR is that consequentialism is goodness is good ends. The um, deontological is goodness is good rules. And then virtue ethics is goodness is good habits. And the idea of virtue ethics is basically that things that are good are things that cultivate good moral character in, um, in, in how you in how you behave, right? And in, in, in the kind of the, the, the quality of person that you are. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know Sargon went on like, is, is on a big virtue ethics arc right now. Destiny started up in a virtue ethics arc like last year. I think Destiny started up by reading C.S. Lewis. Um, but there's, there's, there's a famous quote, and I don't think it's a C.S. Lewis quote, but there's a famous quote that says that um, it's something that man Man is both the marble and the sculptor. And the idea is, is that every action that you take also acts on you, and you change as a result mm -hmm. of it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think everyone has the, um, the experience of being like a bit trepidatious about doing a new thing, but then as soon as you do it, you realize, oh, I can do it. And then you do it like regularly. You know, smokers, for example, mm -hmm. drug users, people who drink mm -hmm. alcohol. Um, but like also more positive behaviors as well. You know, you're scared about do, about you know breaking out of your shell. You break out of your shell. Oh, it's actually not so bad. What's what's happening psychologically is like new um, new pathways are being formed in your brain that makes it easier to do those actions a second, third, fourth, fifth time. Mm -hmm. And so, like, what what ends up happening is that good ethical behavior is whatever builds virtuous habits in your person. And that can be related to good rules, and it can be related to good ends, but it's also related to good habits. Um, and the reason I'm bringing this up, the reason I'm bringing this up is because even though a lot of left-leaning people are like strict consequentialists, mm -hmm. the entire argument regarding platforming is a virtue ethics argument. And a lot of lefties tend to reject virtue ethics. Because to them, it's all about getting the goal, getting the result. You know, it's all about mm. um, chasing after what makes the world a better place in a very, like, ruthless manner. And, mm. you know, the, the most extreme leftists in history always ended up committing, like, these huge political purges because they were after the goal, regardless of what kind of monster it turned them into. Um, I think that's, you know, th there's a common critique of, of the authoritarian left on the right. And it's that they, they always believe that it's one more purge until utopia. Um, but the, the, platforming, the platforming conversation, the platforming argument is like, it, it, it's, it's a virtue ethics argument because the implication is that your audience will turn into Nazis through exposure to these new ideas. But if your audience were actually strict consequentialists, then, then it wouldn't matter how much exposure to these ideas they get because they're always going to go for the results, and if they're good results, they're good results, right? So, it's it's funny to see. Like, I don't think these people have fully thought through their ideas, because it's funny to see them. Like, it's funny to see them use logic that they would never use in any other situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that is a really interesting point. Um, is there a way that you can? Well, I mean, I guess. That's super interesting that it's like a virtue ethics argument, the platforming argument. Um, I, I feel like it's a mix of consequentialist and, and virtue, isn't it? Well, here's the thing. At the extremes, all three of the, of the ethical systems blend into one, which is why talking about them is kind of meaningless. Mm. <laughs> you know what oh, I mean? Like, okay. I mean, if you talk about um, deontological ethics, the common mm. critique that pretty much everyone knows is like, well, what if you have a bad rule? It's like, well, good, good equals good rules. Well, if you have, if you have a bad rule, should you follow it? And like, like, well, should you, if you have, if you like live in, in a system of, of honor or like a caste system or something and you have to kill somebody who's innocent otherwise, I was like, should you follow that? Well, the answer seems to be no, right? You push deontological ethics to their, to their, their limit. They seem to break pretty easily when it comes to committing immoral actions. Um, but at the same time, consequentialist ethics 
has a very similar problem. And I've heard it said, I've, had, I've heard it said a few times, like, in a pure consequentialist world, no one would ever go to a hospital, right? And the reason you wouldn't go to a hospital is because, like, just per the strict moral calculus, you can go into a hospital for, like, a cold. And then in the hospital are, like, ten patients who, who could all use your organs. <laughs> and the moral calculus is, well, guess what? They'll just kill you, take your organs, save these ten lives. One life versus ten, right? The moral calculus weighs out that that's a moral action in a purely consequentialist sense. And so it's like, well, fuck, like, what, what kind of world do you build when you have that kind of society? Well, it'd be a terrible one, right? So, and then you, you get to, to um, it, basically, you, you reach a point where you realize that the limits of each ethical system are mm -hmm. shored up by the other two ethical systems, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I can see that now, yeah. And um, I did a video, a video, um, like a year and a half ago or something, and the, and the TLDR of it was that consent is a deontological concept because mm -hmm. consent is a set of rules. It's rules-based ethics, right? Like if, you know, you can use sexual consent, you can use consent to working in a, in a, in a, in a job or you know, consent to whatever, right? Anything in life, right? And basically, if you're consenting to whatever it is you're consenting to, you're laying out a set of rules and you're saying, okay, well, I'm going to do X, Y, Z, and you're going to do for me A, B, C, and we're not going to violate these rules because, you know, you don't want to violate the consent of your partner when you're having sex with them or, you know, violate your employer-employee relationship, whatever, whatever it happens to be, the contract, whatever it is. So mm -hmm. consent is a concept that comes out of deontological ethics. And I've seen people, again, on, on the left, like, hate deontology so much. And mm -hmm. uh, the, there's, there's this view on the right as like, well, how come there are so many leftist sex pests? How many? Like, how come? Why? Why? And I don't know if there actually are that many or not. Mm -hmm. But um, there are at least a few, like, high-profile public ones. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, wh why, why are there? And it seems to be the case is that if you have no sense of deontological ethics in your ethical system, then there's no reason to ever respect consent. Because mm -hmm. consent doesn't exist in consequentialism, right? Like, in, in a purely consequentialist set, sense, you know, how much money could I be offered to rape my girlfriend, right? Well, you, you can you just, just keep jacking that number up until it hits a point where I should just do it because I, I can get more good out of it from having that much mm -hmm. money to do more good in the world with than not, right? So in order to object to that scenario, you have to go outside of consequentialism. It's... This isn't exactly like a, a super entertaining conversation. Sorry, no, chat. It's, in, it's, it's, it's helpful. That... It's helpful. Mm -hmm. Chat, shut up, okay? Seriously? <laughs> the, this is helpful. Sorry, guys. Um, Sorry. <laughs> um, no, I, th I, think it is a, I think it is very helpful. Um, so that is something that's interesting, and I think maybe I need to brush up on what you're talking about, these different like ethical frameworks and stuff, um, or whatever The best called. thing you can do? The best uh -huh. thing you can do for like almost any of this is just Wikipedia. It, you know, like I, I, I do a fair amount of reading because because I yeah. like to read, and like for, for some like political top, especially if you're talking about fascism, because it's so it's such an old idea, and it's it's like it was around for like thirty years, then it vanished. Mm -hmm. So like for mm -hmm. that, you have to read. But for a lot of these other other topics that are still like talked about today, the Wikipedia articles are are very um they're very accurate. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'll take a look at that. Um. Yeah, I will. Thank you for that. I think that will actually yeah, no help problem. my argument. If I if I dive into those different ethics things more, I will definitely be able to argue better. So, for example, like you could when someone like Mindwave says, "Look, well, don't you think you have a responsibility to platform whatever?" Right? You could do the Chud logic route of "I don't care, Giga Chad." But you could also say, "Listen, I think the greater good is um, exposing these ideas." and mm. hopefully debunking them. But even if I can't debunk them, the greater good is in having the conversation because free speech itself is a virtue. Free speech itself is a virtue. And, and you know, enforcing those virtues, especially in a climate where they're not really being upheld anymore, at least not right now, um, that's a greater good than any harm that could come of these ideas spreading. And then you could also say that, well, the, the greater good is also that you hone your own skills. And you say, well, you know, even if 
one of my audience turns into a neo-Nazi because I lost a, a debate against Richard Spencer. Well, I'm now a better debater for it. And mm -hmm. that seems to be a, will, like, like a worthy trade-off because now I'm better, you know? Yeah. And oftentimes, like, a lot of, a lot of these, they're, 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 they're frankly just kind of like these, these bullying arguments. Mm -hmm. They seem to be easily brushed away by appeals to, um, to self-improvement, in my experience. Hmm. Interesting. That is really helpful. Um, Someone in your chat says, force mind waves to prove that it's bad. I mean, mind waves can, can pretty easily prove it's a hypothetical bad, right? Like the, well, the, he, the, log the logic tree to, is there. But yeah. Oh, you refuse to? Really? It's easy yeah. to prove. <laughs> I mean, but it's easy to well, prove, but it's also easy yeah. to debunk, right? Yeah. So yeah. Like, like he could say something like, listen, you know, Stardust Platform's Richard Spencer... Richard Spencer converts one of Stardust's audience. The world is now made incrementally worse because there's one more Nazi in the world. Like, there's the logic, right? Mm -hmm. And then you could say, well, even if that's the case, there's so many other benefits to it. Mm -hmm. And no, no, no offense, but you're not like a 10,000 viewer streamer or something. So, there's, so, so the drawbacks mm -hmm. aren't really there. You know what I mean? Yeah, they weren't. Anyway, yeah, I figured I'd, I'd just come on and talk to you for a little bit because every time I've tuned in to your stream for like the past few, it seems like you're going through some sort of struggle session. Some and like sort the last self flagellation, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. How and then like, yeah. and and the last time I I talked to you, um, <laughs> when you were playing Dark Tide, you also seemed down, and I'm like, Jesus, this is like the Stardust Depression arc. Um, I think I've been a little bit more unsure of myself recently in the past few months, um, but I think I'm coming out of it. Um, I think we all get into funks for a little bit. Um, oh yeah, me too, me too. Yeah, I, I know I used to be much more confident as a person um, several months ago, and then, I don't know, the past couple of months have been kind of like a Stardust No Confidence arc, <laughs> and then, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and I think I'm coming out of it now, so... Yeah. Is that because of mind waves or something else? Um, I think it's just compounding things. I've just had like a whole bunch of things going on. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've had like IRL things like unrelated to anything I do online also, you know, screw up what I'm trying to do. It happens all yeah. the time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think you just have something that kind of shakes you and kind of shakes your reality for a little bit. And then you think, can I trust my, my, my reality? Uh, the way that I thought I could and you're unsure of it for a really long time and then you you know you realize that well that was kind of like a freak accident so um I have to like trust myself or I won't be able to do anything again so yeah yeah and a lot of that is just going to be practice too you know yeah yeah so someone in your, in your chances at this point I'm sure only mind waves cares about it at this point the only appropriate action is to bully him well maybe not bully him maybe just ignore him um because I, th I think I heard through the grapevine that he wrote a manifesto about you is that true yeah yeah he did I asked him for timestamps on like specific things within this this interview that I did that he didn't like and he said he's put them but I've looked at like several sections of of this um platforming manifesto or whatever um mm -hmm. and i don't see it i think he said that it's in a link in here somewhere but i'll have to look through the links and stuff and see so yeah so it's it's not as uh, as well made as like a, a destiny manifesto where like everything's sourced nothing like that uh no he sources a, me a bunch so he okay. sources, yeah. He he just makes it all about me, <laughs> which is like, <laughs> yeah, really targeted. So, mm. and then he's just been in. He's been kind of dishonest about me. I feel and mischaracterizing me a whole lot. I, I feel, but um, were you guys friends before this? Or we were friendly. I think we were friendly. Yeah. It but, always sucks when that sort of thing happens and it's over. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you you had a drama with Mister Girl, didn't you? I yeah, I, I yeah. only barely knew about this. Yeah, like, were you guys friends before that too? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Man. It is what it, it is. always. 
Yeah, it always sucks when that sort of thing happens, right? Like here, let me let, let me let me tell you a story, and okay. it'll be a short it'll be a short story. Let me let me tell you a story and uh, see if it sounds familiar to you. Okay, hmm. so I started doing a podcast with a friend of mine in 2017, mm-hmm. right? And it was a, we, had, we had a good time, you know, we, we had a good time. But by the time like 2021 rolled around, he had been like hyper radicalized by mm-hmm. um, by COVID. He's in the UK. And uh, British lockdowns and restrictions were significantly more strict than in America or Canada. Mm. And he was also like, he had built up this, this, um, this persona of himself. Well, it wasn't a persona. It was, it was, it was real. It was, it was real. It wasn't, he wasn't faking it. Um, he, he had like an engineering job and he would like, he, he'd be flown out by companies that he would work with to go to like, to go to the States, go to Turkey, go to like, v- like various places just to do work. Right. And he had a lot of money, he had, he had a lot of travel time, and he kind of built up this image of himself where he would be the guy that would, like, fly into some foreign place for, for a job. He'd have some fun there on the side. Um, if he had internet friends there, he would, he'd be the guy that would go and visit and be like, hey, I'm here, and then they'd go to the bar, and then he'd, like, throw some money around. He'd be the center of attention, and then, you know, he would, he would fly off. You know, that, that, was, that was kind of the, uh, the life he had built for himself. Mm-hmm. And then he was grounded and lost his job and lost everything during COVID lockdowns. Mm-hmm. Um, he kept his house because he inherited his house from his dad. Mm-hmm. And then he spent like a year and a half locked down in this house with no job, a pile of cocaine, um, two trans girlfriends, one of whom was, uh, was an, an actual neo-Nazi and the other mm-hmm. one who was an anarcho-capitalist. And so mm. he's, got, he's got these, these, these two GFs doing lines of coke off his dick, and they're, like, reading him all of this crazy, wow. um, this crazy political theory. And this yeah. guy radicalizes like fucking crazy, right? Yeah. And as he radicalizes, um, I don't. Sargon does, but not nearly as much, and not for the same reasons. Uh, mm. Arch doesn't. You know, V doesn't. Kibbs doesn't. None of us in our, in our circle radicalize at all. Um, really. And he gets to the point where, like, he's, he's so fucking lost and he's so, like, fed up with all of us that he, like, leaks all of our DMs, right? And it was wow. a huge drama on our side of the internet. And so we all cut him out. We kicked him out of our, our private circle. I stopped the podcast with him. It was a big fucking blowout. But, like, wow. I've, I, I've heard that story repeated so many times. Like I think Destiny had a had a had a podcast with someone like five years ago that blew up because because like he got backstabbed. Destiny got backstabbed by Mr. Girl. Like got back, backstabbed by Vosh and Hassan. Like uh, Sargon has been backstabbed by people several times. Mm-hmm. Like it just seems to be a thing in these online spaces where there are just some people who, for whatever reason, can't handle it, and then they like it, it gets into it turns into like high school drama. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so. it doesn't matter, like, it doesn't matter what political side we're talking about or what, what groups, what, 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 it doesn't matter any of it because they all seem to happen, like, roughly the same way, you know? Yeah. So, fuck. You know, I, I know the feeling of, like, thinking that you're, you're friends with someone and then, like, watching it all just blow up because they, they put the knife right in your back, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's never a good feeling. But also, like, making a misjudgment yourself, right? Um, uh, Making a misjudgment on somebody's intentions or whether they're capable of treating you a certain way. Um, It also changes, like, like your sureness on in the future on things. So, yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Like, I, I spent like a year giving him the benefit of the doubt. And he just didn't didn't go anywhere, you know. Yeah. And Sargon's been backstabbed enough that like he he really doesn't want to like he he has like his business going, he has his employees, he has his friends, and he's I'm just like, hey, you know, Sargon, you should you should talk and also air date sometime because she's actually really cool, even though you guys would obviously disagree on a lot of things. Like she's good faith and she's intelligent. And you guys have a good conversation. Mm-hmm. And I've been like, sorry, uh, sorry, um, you should talk to you should, you should talk to Taftaj because. Haftaj is like a right winger and she's read neo-reactionary literature, which you've been reading and like you guys have a decent conversation. And like 
Sargon's been very like cautious about talking to new people because he's had so many people just knife him in the back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Someone in the chat says, who cares about Sargon? Sargon's made his comeback, man. Like, yeah, for real. Yeah, it seems like he's doing well. Yeah. He doesn't he isn't use the Sargon channel anymore, but he, uh, he opened up a, a news outlet called the Lotus Eaters, and his, mm -hmm. um, his, uh, his couple channels are doing really well. He has some associated YouTube channels that are doing very well, but like his website is booming. He's got like a dozen employees, and they're all like making, they're all making, they're all writing articles, they're all doing research. Like, no, yeah. he, Sargon is doing very well. He just, he just doesn't call himself Sargon anymore. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I know. It was so weird to have him covering stuff that I was involved in. I was like, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> But yeah, what, what was that? What, what, what did you cover? It was the um, it was the Anna stuff. Oh yeah, and he had no yeah, idea what right. was going on. He was like calling me like a leftist who's incapable of seeing their own flaws, and I was like, "Damn, bro! Like you got all that from Anna crying about me." <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I didn't see. I think I, I've heard of like I heard that the the take on the Anna stuff that he gave on the Lotus Eaters podcast was not great, but also yeah, because was, he doesn't, he, he doesn't follow the drama, right? Yeah. He doesn't follow any of that drama. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? He just used it to like virtue signal, essentially, in my opinion. <laughs> um, see, even though Sargon's my friend, I still like disagree with, with a lot of the stuff that, that um, they put out over in the Lotus Eaters. I only mm -hmm. really agree with it about half the time, you know? Like, a lot of times I'm like, no, Sargon. But here's the thing. We're still friends, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I've had very, very spirited debates with him in private over mm -hmm. whatever, like, many topics, right? Mm -hmm. But we still, we still, we're still friends at the end of the day because there's this understanding that, like, even though we're, we're having this fight, there's still the meta ethic of the friendship that remains intact, and you don't attack that. You can have, you can have the debate, but you don't attack the friendship. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it seems like a lot of people just don't, just don't do that. They, mm. they just don't. They think that having a disagreement means that, you, that you're not friends anymore. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, we're, I mean... You know, we're, not, we're, not, we're not 16 anymore, guys. Like, come yeah. on. I don't necessarily think that, but I think when, when somebody is, um, like, talking down to you on a regular basis and, like, uh, and talking over you and like mischaracterizing you in, in really public places i think that really does degrade a friendship so yeah yeah it does like especially if it's not like a joke right uh, yeah. yeah like i i will publicly degrade kibs every chance i i, I get yeah. but, but we both know we're joking you know yeah yeah that always sucks okay. Yeah, that's and, okay. Then. And you know what? Like, if 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 the stuff with Mister Girl and then with Mind Waves has contributed in large part to your um to your recent malaise, I wouldn't be surprised because, to be honest, I took like after my backstab, I took like a month mm -hmm. off. I was like, I'm getting the fuck offline for a while. Like, I'm just I'm just getting out of here, man. I'm just piecing. I'm mm -hmm. doing some IRL stuff because, and I I needed it. To, to be honest, I needed it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, you know, it's, yeah. there's multiple compounding factors and stuff, but I think I had majority of my my dip like the past couple of months, and I think I'm coming out of it now. So I'm really happy about that. That's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. coming out of it. Yeah, everyone comes out of it eventually, you know. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Well, thank you for speaking with me. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about? Or um, nothing I can think of off the top of my head. Okay. I've been here for for like half an hour, forty five minutes. <laughs> yeah, been watching like me uh, self flag late uh, as usual. So yeah. yeah, that's long enough for me to turn into a clip on my channel. Ha 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 ha. Nice. <laughs> Listen, everyone who's watching this on my channel, you know, in the next couple of days, whenever it goes out, make sure to go sub to Stardust. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, thanks thanks for talking. I'll see you later. Okay. Yeah. See you later. Thanks for talking. I really appreciate okay. it. No problem. Bye.